Today I'm going to show you how to find a sheep in a pile of wool. This sheep is a baby doll south down, and they are known for having wool in every crevice, including over their eyelids. Once a year we give them a full body trim, which includes clearing out their faces. Once I get the top knot off, I go up their neck and into their cheek. Now I have to shear as close to the eye as possible, trying to remove all that wool so it doesn't block their vision. Or collect eye boogers. Now we finish up the cheek and to the ear. Unlike most breeds, South Downs grow wool all the way to the tips of them, so I have to be extra gentle to make sure that I don't nick them. I've noticed that sometimes the wool will grow into the ear canal. It then becomes covered in wax, so I pull it out and shear it off. Now as close as possible to the last eye, cleaning off those crusties. Then finish up their cheek and over to their ear. I have to be careful this time not to cut the tag out. Those tags are for movement between farms and registration. Now clear out the last ear and we're done. Let's take a look on how I start every sheep with the belly. The first one we're gonna do is a male and the male sheath are located in the center of their belly. So I have to be very careful that we do not just go straight down the middle and nick that. Instead, we have to come from it sideways and that way the shears can roll right over it and not harm it. I use my fingers to pull all the skin tight so I don't accidentally nick any of his little nipples. And then I go at it from the other side, up and over the little pizzle, moving it out of the way safely and clear that last little piece out. Now I need to make sure that the pizzle is extra clean so it doesn't gather anything dirty and make a mess for him. Now compared to the boys, the girls are a breeze. You can shear right down the center of that belly, clearing it all out in one nice long blow. Still manipulating the skin down there with my fingers so that I don't catch any nipples. And we're done, man. That's I'm going to show you the most difficult part of shearing a fleece this big. With a little bit of help from Chunky Monkey, the sheep. For starters, check out how much belly wool she gave. That is truly a massive amount. Chunky has never had a baby. And a sheep that's this metabolically thrifty has plenty of energy to devote to growing dense and beautiful wool. I only really see this in pet sheep. In a reproducing herd, energy is prioritized towards growing and feeding the baby rather than storing fat and growing wool. Heavy sheep produce heavy fleeces. The weight of the wool pulls on the skin, creating a tension wrinkle. This is a perfect storm for nicks. Looking at the bottom of the screen, you can see a tension wrinkle. In order to avoid nicking it, I angle that part of my comb up. As you can see, this has resulted in leaving a ridge on the sheep. If I remove that ridge, pieces of it will fall into the blanket. These are called second cuts. That's undesirable for wool processing. So this girl is left with ridges and no nicks. Good thing there's no mirrors in the pasture because all she cares is that she's cool for the summer. This sheep is getting her first haircut in five years. So let's see how it goes. This sheep is a cross between hair sheep, which naturally shed their winter coats and wool sheep, which do not shed. Notice that her legs don't have any wool on them and the wool by her side is very short. The rest of her fleece is very long and matted. The reason for the short versus long wool is since she is crossed with a hair sheep, she did manage to shed some of her wool. Whatever didn't shed though, ended up just adding to the mats that were growing over the years. The worst part is now those mats are extremely heavy. As I slowly peel them back, the weight of the freed mats pulls on the skin. This creates a tension wrinkle like we talked about in the other video. To avoid nicking them, I raise the part of my comb closest to me. This leaves those ridges that you can see on there. Those ridges don't really affect the sheep, so if left behind, it's no big deal. I do clean some of them up, but I want to get all of this off as efficiently as possible. That way the sheep doesn't run out of patience. With each blow of the clippers, you can see that wool pulling on the skin. I would rather leave the ridges if that means the sheep get to keep its skin. Now we're to the most difficult part, which is the last hip. This is the most difficult because it's the easiest to nick them. As you can see, the full weight of the mat is pulling firmly against the skin. Thankfully, the shearing went really well and the sheep was free of nicks and of these heavy mats. She might not be as smooth as a baby bottom, but she is a brand new girl after all of this. Not to mention she's my class year at Texas A&M. Now back to the mats. Could you imagine having to carry this around? If we look closely at the fibers, you can see the line in the middle where about two years ago, she tried to shed out, but it didn't all quite break away, creating a line in the mat. This is Penelope and she is in desperate need of a shear. Those mats are the depth of my hand. And by mats, I mean one big one. This sheep came from the Houston SBCA. She was found wandering the streets of downtown Houston with a potbelly pig. They now live together at their forever home where her owners tried to shear her but were unsuccessful. It was impossible to find an entry point, so I tried my best to push through the mats with sheer force. 
Get it, Sheer Force. After I broke this loose, I had to pay close attention to try not to nick her. These mats are extremely heavy and close to her skin. Mats like this pull on the skin and cause a tension wrinkle which are super easy to nick. Unfortunately, I was not able to get all of these off with no nicks, but I know that those little cuts are way better than her overheating in this massive blanket. By the time we were done, I was so surprised she was so calm the entire time, and when I let her go, she almost had to catch her breath for a minute. I let her take her time as I go check out that fleece. It's extremely heavy and super thick. Imagine feeling the breeze on your skin for the first time in years. Walking into this barn, for a moment I thought I was Katie from Mean Girls. But this is Gwen, not Gretchen. And I'm a lesbian shear from Texas and not Africa. Gwen was such a sweetheart. She is 100% as cuddly as she looks. And though she could definitely knock you out with that booty, she's as gentle as can be. She just relaxes into me as I peel back that wool coat. Gwen is a young man's pet, and you can tell us that she gets plenty of treats and love. Although she is on the hefty side, she seems to be very comfortable in my arms and very trusting. That's a great thing because as I get to her back, it gets extremely dirty. All that dust is definitely slowing me down. Oftentimes, chunky sheep get little dirt patches like that because the shape of their back is more of a tabletop than a curve. Now that the wool is peeled back, it should be easy for her to shake all that dirt off. Or maybe she'll find a scratching post. Whatever she does, I know she's got to feel better. On her way out, she just raved to the ladies in line. Now back to Gwen and those gnarly tips. Can't have her looking ragged. Here's what they're supposed to look like. And this is what we're working with. First order of business is to trim off that one that just needs a little bit. We go around the hoof and trim off the wall to where it's flat with the pad. Then we start with the heel of the other side. Once I get that roughly flush, it's time to start working on the tip. But there's no way I'm getting through that with my regular nippers, so I break out the horse ones. Since I've already trimmed back the left side, I know I can take the right side at least that far before I get to the quick. The pad of the hoof does have a blood supply, just like dogs and cats, or even our own nail bed. I have no intentions of making her bleed, so I'll just work slowly. Now once the hoof starts looking kind of normal, I can break out my other nippers. Now that the tip's back, I can start working on the sides. There are several reasons why hooves might grow like this. If a sheep is metabolically thrifty, they use the extra energy from their extra feed to grow wool and more nails. We just need to make sure she doesn't grow so much she can't walk. 